Hey y'all, I'm Melanie Red, and I want to welcome you to Ordinary Women, Extraordinary God on video. And we are loving getting to introduce you to some of our favorite people. And we want to get you, get your coffee cup, get your tea, hop on in, join the conversation. We'd love for you to leave comments or ask questions as we're talking. Uh, but we work in tandem with the ministries of love we're finding. And it's our joy to encourage you to laugh without fear of the future. And so today I get to introduce you to a friend. We actually are Instagram friends. This is the first time we've had like a sort of a face-to-face, -face. <laughs> yeah. but uh, I love her videos. I think she's got extra spunk. Uh, she's an encourager. She offers hope. She makes me laugh. And I wanted you to meet her and just hear about her life and find out how you can connect with her. Her name is Brenda Losher. And Brenda, welcome. We are so glad you're here today. I'm honored to be here. It's so fun. Yes. And it's so fun that you can have friends on social media that really yes. are your friends. Yes. <laughs> I mean, isn't it cool? It makes the world feel so much smaller, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It really does. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about who you are. Introduce yourself to us today. Okay. My name is uh, Brenda Losher, and I am an empty nester now. I have one daughter, and, uh, you know, I did the traditional thing um first i was raised in a christian home and in fact i was saved when i was in elementary school and you know went in the youth went to church camps and all those fun uh things and then i um went to a baptist college and um i got my degree in music and my bachelor's and master's in that and i taught and then i uh, pursued my doctorate in uh, special education and um and I taught that, and then I taught at the university. And I love working with um, people and helping others. Um, so you're so a doctor, Brenda Losher. I did not yeah. introduce you right. <laughs> that's okay. No, it's fine. I'm just another person. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I think that's great. And tell us a little bit about what you do online, because I mentioned that, and I'd love for them to hear a little bit about your ministry online. Okay. Well. You know, I have a story and I don't know, over the last year or two, I mean, I started um, online marketing, but I also found it as a, as I was sharing stories, I was getting messages of people thanking me for encouraging um, them and how much it helped them when they woke up in the morning to have that to start the day. And that was motivating them or inspiring them to keep going on. So I kind of have been using that as a ministry to provide hope for others. Um, you know, everyone has difficulties in life. I know at one point in my life, everyone thought I had such a perfect life. I was active in church. I had a career. I had a nice home and everything. But a lot of other things were going on. And we see that every day. And so after 16 years, I went through a very high conflict divorce. And it was a very difficult time for me um, for several reasons. But also, initially, the hard time I had is you never enter a marriage thinking you're going to get divorced. At least I didn't. And I had a, a, a difficult with, um, part with it because, you know, it's, it's a, a sin I had a whole issue with it from a Christian perspective. And so that was a very difficult um, time. And then it lasted, um, I was in and out of court for 12 years. Wow. And so it was very stressful and it was stressful as a, a single parent. And so I think it's just very important that people have stuff going on in their lives. It might not appear that way, but they do. And sometimes they just need hope and an encouragement to keep going. Right. So. Well, and you kind of answered, I like to ask because we're ordinary women pursuing an extraordinary God. I, I like to have, ask how you're ordinary. You've kind of shared a little bit of how you're just one of the girls who's lived through a really tough situation. Yes. Um, and I think that that's why everyone is ordinary. It might not appear that way, but everyone has stuff. You know, I had that divorce and I went through that. And during that, I was really expressing, uh, experiencing a lot of PTSD, depression, anxiety, and trying to be a single parent with all the uh, court stuff all the time. And after my daughter left for college and stuff, you know, 
I just continued to go down and just very uh, honestly lost hope and attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that has been a whole journey in itself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some people will say, why would you do that? Or, you know, you'll hear Christians say, you know, you're not a Christian if you do that. But people don't understand that when a person gets to that point, their thinking is totally different. They think they'll be better off not being here. Um, and they can't think about how it's going to impact others. So, um, you know, everyone has challenges in their I lives. I appreciate you sharing that. I, I think some people will really be able to relate, Brenda, because a lot of us struggle. And I talk to women all the time who struggle. They've been through a hard divorce or they're dealing mm -hmm. with depression or they're dealing with great discouragement. And maybe no one knows. And so I want to right. tell you, we're going to give you hope today. And if you're in this place, I want you to hear the hope that we're going to share because it's not over and, and you don't have right. to give up today and it's not the end and there is something. No. And so that let's go to that because I want to ask you that. How has God been extraordinary to you? What did he do? Because I want to hear, how did you get out of that place that, that, that the depths that you were in? I mean, David talks about, he was so depressed waves felt like waves were washing over him. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like you've been in that bottom place. Yeah. yeah. You know, I reflect um, that, you know, as you can think more now, you, you know, you always see things yeah. as you reflect on your life. And I'll tell you how God was extraordinary in my life. It's been a, a few things. One, I was at the right church at the right time yeah. and had the right people there. Mm -hmm. I had so much support um, there. Never felt judgment. Never. Mm -hmm. Um if I was any judgment, it's what the pressure you put on yourself is thinking, oh my gosh, I'm that divorced woman or whatever. And really having to deal with that psychologically. But never was I judged from church. It was always supportive. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's really um, important and critical. And I felt like I feel like that was a God thing, mm -hmm. that I was at the right church at the right time. Mm -hmm. I also feel like that he had the right friends there, the right therapist, and it's what's really odd now. I look back, it's like I had the right attorney. <laughs> I really did. Yeah. And like all these people were Christians and they were supportive. And that's a God thing. Because mm -hmm. I hear, you know, people who don't have support or, you know, they leave the church for various reasons. And that was something that provided stability for me and my daughter. So I look at those as God things. And then another God thing is. When I did attempt uh, suicide, it's a miracle that I survived. In fact, it was a week before I ever um, regained consciousness. And um, and I was in ICU all that time. And then I was in cardiology. And then I went to outpatient. And I, it's a God thing that I survived. And the only the thing that I remember was when I did come to and I knew who I was or where I was, the first thing I thought is, I, I even screwed this up. That's really the, what I thought. I can't even do this right. That's the main thought that I remember. But you know what? God wasn't finished with me yet. Yeah. I have a story to tell and people to help. Yeah. So I can see that now. So, you know, God was, has been extraordinary in so many ways in my life. Yeah. Amen. I, you know, it's amazing sometimes, isn't it? When we can look back and see his hand through people and circumstances and how he just wouldn't let you go. He wasn't ready. You weren't done yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, and I appreciate your vulnerability. I was thinking about, we, we had a situation recently in our town where uh, a group of men all from the same church were in a small plane that went down and only one of the five survived. And, you know, there's a sense of God's not done with him yet. And right. they all were believers. They all knew where they were headed, but I, it, it's amazing the sovereignty and the hand of God, how he, can pick and choose um, how he wants to use us and when he wants to use us and where. And so I'm grateful that you're still here. And I'm grateful <laughs> Brenda because Brenda has this most encouraging ministry. I didn't even know all the story. I just knew she was funny and she was encouraging and she was kind of spunky online. And I'm like, this woman's got some, some grit. And, and I love how God's taken your low moments and now he's using them 
in, in a ministry capacity, you know, your, your biggest mess has become maybe your biggest message. Would you right. say? <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What are you looking forward to now? Now this year, as you look ahead, what is God doing and what are you excited about in the future? You know, I'm really evaluating my next steps right now. I feel like I'm at a place that, um, I'm, you know, now that my daughter has graduated from college and she's moved, I'm thinking, where do I want to go next? Where I can, I, where do I want to live? Um, one of my next steps, because, um, that's one reason why I'm working online, you know, after all of these years and the stress of being a clinical researcher, a pro professor and stuff, it's like, I want to work online and I feel like it's a way that I can reach other people and yeah. women also. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason why I work online. I really want the freedom to be able to live where I want to live and travel when I want to travel. So I'm looking at that next, um, this year. And I'm also uh, something that I'm working on now and focusing on is um with managing uh, depression and anxiety, because it's not something that just goes away. It's yeah. something that you continually have to uh, work on and manage. And there's so much more research now, and I'm finding this, is how much our gut health and our diet and what we put in our bodies also impacts our brain health. It's really yeah. brain health. I mean, we also always talk about physical health, but it really impacts our brain health too. Yeah. And the foods that we put in it, it's just interesting how much it affects our serotonin and dopamine and stuff like that. Um, you know, instead of just putting the medications in ourselves, I'm not against medication. I, I mean, I take medication. I've been able to reduce it, uh, but those also have effects on our brain and um yeah. So I'm really, that's a journey that I'm on this year and um, wanting to educate other people on that too, because sleep affects it, our stress, lack of exercise. There's so many things that we have control over to help manage it. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. That's That'll be fun. It sounds like you might have a book in there that you're going to write. I know that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, know. put it in a book, girl. Sounds good. <laughs> Yeah. And you're so right. I mean, it's, we're so impacted by our sleep and what we eat and drink and yes. how much we move and what we, what we watch mm -hmm. and listen to, you know, there's, it, it yes. does feel like it just all is connected. Yeah. Yes. And it impacts us. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's a good word. And I'll, I'll be, I'll look forward to seeing some of the things that you share and maybe yeah. that book that you're going to work on. <laughs> yes. Um, well, let me ask you this. What is what I've been teaching you lately? What do you learn? What is something that's been encouraging on you that you say, man, I'd love to pass this on to somebody else? Um, you know, one thing I've really learned is patience. <laughs> Things are not yeah. in our timing. It's in God's timing. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's so important because we don't see the big picture. God sees things that we don't see. Yeah. And, um, so that's one thing that um, God's taught me. Another thing, as um, it says in Hebrews, that God will never leave us or forsake us. Yeah. And I think that's so important for each of us to remember because there's times that we think, where is God? Yeah. But you know what? He's never going to leave us yeah. and nothing will ever separate us from the love of God. Amen. And I just think that's... Um, something that's so important. And I remind myself of that too. And God's taught me that. Um, so I, good. I think that's, yeah, I just did a podcast and I'll share the link. It's not even out when we're doing this, but I, I, by the time we share this, it will be, but I, I talk <laughs> about God's love and how I, I love to read verses about God's love. I love in Romans eight, where it says nothing mm -hmm. can nothing. separate us from the love of God. And I love praying that I'll understand it more. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. In Ephesians, there's a verse that says we'll understand the breadth and depth and length and width of God's love because it's so vast. And so I think it's a great way to pray that we, you know, we'll stay close to him and that we'll begin to really realize how much he loves us and how much he cares and how much he's with us. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go back, and look at Luke. I mean, there's God, you know, going after the lost sheep, the lost coin, 
bringing the little son back. He's there all the time. For yeah, us. it's sweet. It's sweet to think about. And I, I think more and more, the older I get, the more I really want to enjoy time with him. I realize being in his presence to spend time with him changes everything. And it affects mm -hmm. my thinking. It affects my energy you know, and the way I look at life. So that's a, that's a great thing to be learning. Well, let me ask you this. If people want to get in touch with you, because you, you get a lot of messages and I do too. I love when people reach out. How, what's the best way for them to reach you? Where do you like to be contacted? Um, you know, I'm in my DMs every day. Um, I can be found on Instagram at Brenda S. Losher. I have to use my middle initial too yeah. because someone else says Brenda Losher. Okay. Um, and then I'm in Ma Messenger on Facebook every day too. And that's just Brenda Losher. And then uh, my email is uh, Brenda Losher at hotmail.com. And, Great. Um, we'll link all that. We'll put all that below. So that nice. you and I, I've been saying this on all the videos, Brenda, and I know you probably are like this too. We like to hear from you and we yes. like to hear your questions, prayer requests, suggestions, ideas, what's going on with you. I love to hear people's stories, like you said. Yeah. And so y'all get to know Brenda, go find her, go find her on Instagram, Facebook, get to know her. And uh, I believe you'll be so encouraged by the things that she's got to share. And you'll find yourself laughing at her too. <laughs> Because sometimes she's really funny. <laughs> so. And um, and I really do like receiving messages. I know sometimes people are hesitant yeah. or they'll be surprised. I can't believe you responded to yeah. me or something like yeah. that. And I'm thinking I respond to all yeah. of my messages yeah. personally. Yeah. yeah, I respond to everything. Me too. Sometimes so it takes me 24 hours, but I try to get oh, yes. to everybody, you know. If That's I see my goal, pop 24 up, hours. Yeah, I try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but but you know, we love to hear from you. And and so don't just be a watcher or observer. Go ahead and mm -hmm. enter in if you have a question or you want to ask something or share something. You can do that in these comments below wherever you watch this video, or you can share them directly. Let me know or Brenda and just say, hey, I saw you talking to Melanie or I saw you on mm -hmm. um, Ordinary Women the video. And I wanted just to kind of know more about what you went through. And I, I would think probably Brenda, because you share so honestly and so, so sweetly, there are people that can, can relate and I'm sure mm -hmm. you hear from them. And so if you're struggling mm -hmm. with something similar, reach out to her. Uh, she's been there and she made it to the other side. And, and now God's just, you know, used all that she's been through and he's still using her. And uh, I love that. Uh, how he's just taken your life and turned it and used it the way he has through sounds like some really tough circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, do you have anything else you'd like to share? Is there any other uh, quote, thought, verse, uh, good word, something you'd like to just share with everybody before we go and just that would maybe offer a little hope as we end today? Um, one thing is, you know, people say they feel overwhelmed or they don't have control over everything because of everything that's happened. And one thing that I have really learned is look at what you do have control over and manage that because there is stuff in life that happens that you do not have control over. So I look at what I do have control over. I have control over, I have a very routine that I do in the morning, a time of devotion, I listen to music, I journal. Those are things that I had control over that I can do. That's a good word. So that's one thing. And I remember when I was going through the divorce and I felt like I didn't have control over anything that was happening. And then there was the financial aspect. I mean, there was just so much. And I just remember talking with my daughter and she was only five at the time. <laughs> and I, I was thinking, what can I do in this chaos to provide stability yeah. for her? And there were two things we identified. One, she wanted to stay in the same church. Yeah. You know, she was in Sunday school class. They had Christmas yeah. programs, you know, all the things that they do for children. And that was important to her. She had friends there. And then, um, and then she wanted to stay in the same school district. So I thought those are the two things that as a mom, I can try to manage and control. So in the chaos of everything, look at what you can control. And um, I really want to share that with someone because it's really, sometimes there's so much chaos that you just can't see through it. Right. 
That's I think that's very wise. So that's a good word. Control what you can. Let go of the things you can't. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. That, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being with us today. This has been You're so welcome. encouraging. And, and I believe some some of y'all are going to watch and you're watching right now and you're thinking, I needed to hear this today. This gives me hope. And so that's my prayer that you'll be given yes. hope as you look ahead to the future. You'll be afraid, but you'll think there is hope and God is still at work and God can still use my life and work in my life. So do not lose heart today. Right. <laughs> Brenda, it's been sweet. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're so welcome. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. And we want y'all to come back and join us again. Thank you for meeting with us today. And listen, leave us a comment or a question. Let your friends know about this ministry. Share it and get to know Brenda. She's yeah. awesome. She encourages me. I love when I see her stuff on Instagram, especially. So y'all get to know her and it's been a joy. And so we'll see you next time. God bless you. And remember, we're ordinary women, but we are pursuing an extraordinary God. And he is absolutely crazy about you. God bless y'all.